the enemy of generational impact. Everywhere, anything that carries positivity to a large extent has a negative dimension. And where there is the workings of God, there is the operations of the devil. I want you to understand that there is a battle between the flesh and the spirit. Paul said, I subdue my flesh. Daily. You put this flesh under subjection. There are many things you desire to do that you battle to do. And the things you don't love to do, you don't struggle to do. Anything that carries opposition carries promotion. Satan cannot oppose his will but he will always oppose god's will so any time you are struggling over something is a sign that that thing carries your next level why do you battle to pray why do you struggle with your tight why do you struggle with your purity life because satan knows that that thing carries your I came to talk to somebody in case you are in this condition number one is a sign that there is something about you because Satan don't waste his investment on people who don't have a future Satan don't spend his time and resources on people who don't carry something have you ever asked yourself a question what will a king on the throne be doing with a baby born in the manja it's not about the baby it's not about the gender it's not about the age it's about the destiny of the child when you see the devil on your case it's a sign that you are somebody i came to prophesy by the end of this encounter the devil can abort god's agenda i said the devil will not abort god's agenda of your life if you believe in shall thank you jesus thank you jesus i'm a candidate for generational impact every one of you must understand that you were created to make impact what's generational impact generational impact is the impact that stays that lasts you are gone the impact is still there See, tomorrow jesus said to the woman that brought the alabaster boss she did something that provoked a generational matter he said wherever this gospel is preached he said your name will be mentioned i don't know two thousand years ago a woman did something two thousand years after reverend fidelis is talking about the woman why because that's generational impact i prophesy God will give you an idea that your fourth generation will live to inherit. God will give you a wisdom that your generation will benefit from. Have you not seen men who reign and there's no continuity in their reign? You are not truly successful until you have a successor. I value David more than Solomon in the school of impact and generational impact. Because David handed over the kingdom holistically to Solomon. Solomon handed it over divided. God said, I will divide this temple in the days of your children. I will break it. Why? Because of careless life. Because the things he should do, he was badly to do at a time. And the things he should not do, he was enjoying doing them. When you start falling in love with the things you were supposed to hate, you know that your impact may depart with you. There are people who built a legacy and crumbled it before they walked away. I prophesy. <gasps> Your word will hear you. Again. There is a man that once lived. I think he's dead. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. His grandchildren, they still share almost a million dollars for them every Christmas. The thing of the God. That's an impact. I'm not talking of this mammoth work concept and idea that you are developing. Survivor mentality. Anything goes because you just want to survive. The Bible said there was a man of God that lived. When the man of God was there, the wife went to meet prophet and said, man of God, my husband was a man of God who served God, but he's dead. What did he leave as impact? He says his creditors are here to take his two children. He left a generational debt for his children to pay. People are leaving generational blessings. He left a generational debt. There are many of us because of parental carelessness. We are managing generational causes instead of generational blessings. Because if the first Adam was conscious and careful, I would not need a Jesus to redeem me. Satan had a hold on us because our fathers handed us over. There was a plan for our life. God's agenda for our destiny from the beginning. 
was authentic but my father handed it over Adam gave it to Satan that Jesus had to come and redeem man even in our redemption there is still a battle not to be reduced am I talking to someone here I came to church this morning to make you understand number one live your life with consciousness of posterity don't pursue prosperity at the essence of prosperity prosperity may not be generational in nature but prosperity is what generations will inherit Abraham blessings are mine do you know Abraham's mistake is still what we are managing today if Abraham had not played the way much I would not have to manage the case of Ishmael Sleeping with the house girl was what brought Ishmael to generational things. Abraham is dead! But the generations of Ishmael are still there. Be careful! When men live for the future, they are careful about what they do in the present. You are not futuristic in nature. Imagine a man died in his summarized nature. After his death, the children regretted. Why were they regretting? He went to collect one chief Tessy title that does not count. So the children were told they must kill how many cows. That's a generational pain. Another man's father died and it was peaceful. Because nothing else. He lived for God and lived for his family. And so when he left, it was all about God. And you know with God, there's no pain. John 10, 10, go and read it with. Don't rush it. Settle down. Be counting the words. Okay? Now, if you read John 10, 10 with a settle down mentality, you will discover that there's nothing the devil gives you that is free. Because it's either he's stealing something or killing something or eventually will destroy something. Imagine the thing where Bella said they sweet you. Now, now I make you know the fee come out for public because you don't get better. But when you the do and the blessing and you the rain, I don't just live the life I live because of I'm afraid of hell. I live it because I don't want to leave hell for my family. When I'm done fulfilling the numbers of my days and I've gone to be with the Lord, if Jesus tarry to tarry, there is something I want to live for. I want to live that my children will look at me and they will say, God bless my father. I heard the story of a pastor who went to be with the Lord. And on the day of his funeral, people were coming. Church people will come and talk about wonderful pastor. Another one will come about wonderful missionary. Everybody kept talking and the children tapped their mother. Who are they talking about? And he said, they are talking about your father. The good pastor the good this and that but he was a bad husband he was a bad father every one of you must understand that there is a generation that is waiting to call the result it may not just be when we get to heaven it may just be the next generation am i talking to somebody here somebody shout i'm a candidate for generational impact